<laughs> it's definitely a force of habit. Salute, my guy. I might be a tequila drinker now. Yeah, that shit good. If you can find this motherfucker somewhere up here. I'm going to have to find a similar one because they only sell it to the res- to the people who visit the resorts. Oh, shit. Ain't yeah. that some shit? Yeah. So, it is what it is. Um, yeah. A lot to unpack. It's been I, a while. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's definitely been a minute. Well, just gonna jump into that shit. Fuck it. Let's get it motherfucking popping. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I am what I am, and I'm going to be the very best of what I am. And for those who don't like me confidentially, I don't give a damn. I'd like to thank you for letting me be myself. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the crib. I'm Ramon. I'm Darian. So 41. 41. My nigga got it. Yeah. I, I was I was expecting 42. I ain't gonna lie. I was expecting you to say 42. No, nah, I guess I have made the sessions and I was like, I can't write. Can't write. <laughs> did I leave my iPad over there? Shit. You did. I'll come back to it. Um, but yeah, let's start. Let's jump right in, man. Okay, uh, let's get it, man. What are you uh, grateful for, sir? I'm grateful for uh, I'm grateful that I'm able to be grateful. A lot of people take being grateful for granted. Even if the if it's the small things, like everything matters, everything happens for a reason. Like just be grateful for your existence and the fact that you're still here and able to continue to make your mark on the world. That's what I feel. All right. What about you? I am grateful for the country of Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that, I knew that was gonna yeah, be the one. <laughs> man, man, let me tell you, we we had an awesome, awesome time. Um, well deserved getaway because we hadn't been away or even taken a staycation. Mm. You know, the only staycation I took is when we moved here, and I that's ended up not, working the whole week. Yeah, that you vacation. constantly moving shit. That's not a staycation. That's well. A, remember, it was after we had that's moved. A business trip. That's yeah, a business staycation. <laughs> I like that. No, like, that's a business staycation. But uh, Mexico was a fucking amazing Thanksgiving. We had a good time. Susan endeavored to cook. It was her first cooking Thanksgiving. Oh shit! And she did a great job. That's what's up. So, how about you? It was pre- it was pretty basic. I mean, chill with the family all week. We went, we went line dancing. They had me line dancing. Yeah, was, is there a video of that? With, it may be. I don't got it though. Okay. Somebody else might got it. But I was out there. I was getting jiggy with it. All right. <laughs> Do you normally like feel comfortable dancing? I, 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 that's actually one of my hidden passions is dancing. Like I really like dancing. Okay. But, uh, I've never been like the type to dance in front of people. Okay, so, more like save the last dance dancing, or more like uh, more like uh, stomp the yard or whatever. Step up. Step up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that's the more of the. I can of... see you being that guy. <laughs> I can definitely see it. Nah. Yeah. I definitely. But yeah, it, it was a dope experience. I was nervous at first, but then when I realized I had, it, I was like, oh, I'm good. Yeah. But yeah, that that's shit was fun like, though. Did you really have it, or did the alcohol make you think you had it? I had some of them, but the alcohol boosted the rest of the confidence. So Fair enough. That's, okay. Once I had them couple, I was like, "Fuck it, I got them all." Like, <laughs> and, it's, and, and basically, make sure my understanding is right. It's kind of like I don't want to diminish it, but the only thing that comes to mind right now is like the electric slide or the cha cha slide. Mm-hmm. Like everybody's together doing. Yeah. See, I've always been scared to do that because I feel like I'm gonna be the one that like trips the whole group up or some shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Depending on what dance it is, you definitely could. Cause it's this one dance where you take a fucking big ass leap to the left, and if everybody don't leap, somebody falling. So do you do you know what what you got to do beforehand? Like, is there practice for it or? Yeah, my my mother in law pretty much teaches line dances. So oh, so you had the inside track. Yeah, well, my wife actually was teaching me because my wife basically studies under my under her mom, and she ended up like we was just at the crib chilling. She was like, "Let me show you a couple of them. They they pretty easy." And I tried it out. I did it, and we surprised her mom one day. She saw me doing them. She was hyped. Oh shit, that's what's up. Facts. Family's good, man. Yeah, family's family's great. That's what's up. Daughter's still evil, but she good. <laughs> she good. That's her job. Yeah. Um, I gotta get up and grab my iPad because speaking of Thanksgiving, one of the first things I want to tackle into is this picture you guys see in front of you. This is a lot to unpack in this picture. It's a man. Hold on. I don't see no flavor. Fuck <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> He needs an iPad so he can look at the picture and dissect oh, you found it. it. Uh, yeah, I found it. Okay. I found it. First of all, I'm gonna start off with whatever fucking type casserole that is in the front. 
Hang on, let me let me let me you catch gotta, up. You gotta to pull you. it up. That shit look like <laughs> that shit look like egg and broccoli casserole. <laughs> that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker. <laughs> that motherfucker ugly. Oh, I'm still happy, so I can't find the photos app. All right, here we go. Wait, th- <laughs> that shit in the front and the left. You said egg and what? Egg and broccoli casserole. Okay, with extra cheese. Do you think they're gonna eat this other shit and then cook the turkey? <laughs> that turkey look raw as shit. The motherfucker put it in the air fryer for five minutes. So it was like, we good. We, we good. We just need it on the outside. And why the fuck you get these store bought ass sugar cookies? Them shits is horrible. Back left hand corner. It might be the best thing on this table though. Yeah, because that motherfucker pie up front. <laughs> that motherfucker sick as hell. He, they ran out of, uh, I guess, those are, uh, oh. chocolate chips, maybe? And why are the dogs in the back so sad <laughs> looking, <laughs> looking, trying to look in that dusty ass door? Wait, I didn't even see it was more than one dog. <laughs> it's two of them motherfuckers back there. He looking like, y'all gonna eat that? Wait, the motherfucker, the one laying down, no, he ain't getting shit. Wait, <laughs> speaking of the, the dog, the dog. look at the deviled eggs below the dog. Yo, whoever made this meal though said, fuck that, I ain't doing no dishes. Hell no. Look at the styrofoam cafeteria lunch plates over there. I ain't going to lie, nigga. I ain't doing dishes either. So I, <laughs> I, get the, I, I give them That's shits the only thing out. That's the only thing I give y'all credit for because I'm not washing dishes All either. Right, let's jump but to them these... goddamn biscuits. <laughs> them biscuits. You put... You put <laughs> he was about to, no, we not skipping them, motherfucker. That's not Popeye's biscuits. That shit's worse. That shit's dry as hell. Wait, what's these three things that... Are all yellow. First, why is there so much cheese? <laughs> the line to the bathroom at this Thanksgiving is going to be ridiculous. There is so much cheese in this photo. What the fuck is that up front? <laughs> I don't know. It, it, is it baked corn? <laughs> the fuck is that? The fuck is it? That shit look like... That shit like throw up, bro. <laughs> They just heated up some fucking, and, and then these goddamn heated <laughs> some fucking yams with the man, with the marshmallow. What the fuck is what the fuck is wrong with your yams, cuz? Why are they so brown? I don't know. Way too much brown sugar. Way too much. Wait, wait. You skipping stuff though? So of these three yellow dishes, this person said, "Fuck mixing the cheese on whatever it is." They just dropped it on top. <laughs> that shit don't even look right, bro. Is that mashed potatoes with cheese? Mm, the caucasity. <laughs> <laughs> what is this soup in the back? Hold on. I didn't even see that. I'm thinking that might be gravy. That's a lot of motherfucking That's a gravy. lot of fucking gravy, but I don't like shit on this. That turkey going to need gravy and, <laughs> and some more time in the oven. The fuck? That shit, that shit need it all, motherfucker. <laughs> mm, mm. Why does this one pie look like it's leather topped? Another top. Wait, what's the shit behind the pie next to the cookies in between the... What the fuck is that? That shit just got a burnt top. <laughs> and you really put them... Th- I'm I'm sorry. I'm coming back to these fucking cookies. These dry ass. <laughs> but they got the twip. They got the whipped cream. <laughs> they got the <laughs> got the, they got, they got the real whipped cream for you, though. Uh uh-uh. uh, and, and I think because they're armed. Why look like that turkey got shot <laughs> that, <motherfucker>. that day? <laughs> that day. <laughs> oh shit! We're having too much fucking fun with this picture. Man, this this picture says a lot. Tell you what, if you if any of your trays ever look like anything on this photo, don't invite me to your fucking. I about to say, what'd you do? You go to your friend house, like you finally give in. You know, your wife go to your friend house, and this is the spread. It's like go in and help I'm gonna yourself. Take, I'm going to take a scoop of everything and feed it to the goddamn dogs in the back. That's the fuck I'm gonna do. I bet you the one dog has been there. He knew not to even eat. Oh yeah, shit. the one the on the left. Is yep. Like, yep. The one on the right. Like uh, uh-uh. as soon as y'all open this door, I'm fucking this up. Mm. That shit's horrible. Mm-mm-mm. Hey, but you know what? At least they had food, right? Some people didn't even have a spread like this. That motherfucking turkey got a tumor. The <laughs> fuck is that on top of it? <laughs> I think you they baked the, the they baked the timer in it. That's why they couldn't see <laughs> that shit. Was it done? In that bitch. <laughs> oh no! Mm-mm. I was gonna compliment them on all the matching utensils until us. Why is there a measuring cup in the turkey? You see that? 
That's to get that turkey juice. That ain't got no. That turkey blood? ain't got no goddamn juice. That's nothing but fucking dry blood. Fucking horrible. You ever see um, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? I feel like I did. Yeah, I feel like that's I did. like one of the few Christmas movies I watch every year. And, and it, when they they overcook their turkey, when they cut into that shit, just deflate. Oh shit! Yeah, and I think I take that. That's over what this turkey. Lo- yeah, because that turkey definitely ain't done. Salmonella. That oh might be the person goodness. who didn't know any better. And just thought it was like Sunday, like regular Sunday dinner. You could just get up and prepare the turkey in a couple hours. That's the one motherfucker who always wanted to make the turkey, <laughs> and they never let him. And it's the one year they did, and he fucked it up. Or they got all. Oh wait, 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 wait. We skipped something. I'm sorry. Next to the turkey, below the gravy soup. The fuck is that? Is that stuffing? <laughs> it looks like a tray of dirt. It's nothing but breadcrumbs in that bitch. <laughs> The fuck is that? Is that breadcrumbs? Nah, that's dandruff. Say, 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 Okay, because of the history of the small pox blankets. Yeah, and all that other shit. It's it's yeah, it's a lot of reasons. We don't celebrate most of them. Holidays. But do you get together with family though? Yeah, yeah. We right, we, I mean. we didn't get together that day. We got together the Sunday after though. Okay. But yeah, we did that. That's how I kinda look at it, you know, regardless of now, yeah, what that's, it's founded on. Yeah. We just use it for actual just family time. We don't really give a fuck about the holiday itself. Gotcha. Yeah. Understood. Um I thought I had my, I had my, I thought I was gonna have my Bruce Willis moment in Mexico, mm. right? Oh shit! So the one restaurant we really liked was the Mexican Steakhouse, and this is the next night we're going there. So we didn't go as early as usual, so there was a wait. So we go in, we um, you know, tell them we need a table for two, and they say, all right, it'll be ready in an hour. So it's like, all right, let's go walk around until the table's ready. Yeah. So we round in the corner out the the restaurant. I see a Mexican dude with a shotgun. Hmm. And I look and I see two more. Oh, shit. Susan, this is my moment. I got to save everybody. Because yeah. I didn't understand. Because I hadn't seen anybody with a shotgun the whole time I was there. Yeah. They were uh, armored car drivers, I'm assuming, for the ATM. One of them little ATMs. I'm, so I'm like, so then it started getting me thinking. Why? There's three dudes with shotgun. Like, I mean, big 12. The one dude was just was smaller than shotgun. Mm-hmm. Why does it take three of these dudes to empty out this little ATM? They probably be getting hit. They probably be, they have to be getting hit. About. For for them to go that far. Normally you see like one dude come in, empty this bitch out, and and a lot of times you don't even see the motherfucker do it. Like he, yeah. he just in and out. Like <laughs> But they probably was getting hit for them shits. Like, but apparently it's lit outside the resort, right? Mm-hmm. So the one day we went on the shopping trips, you know, the, the 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 driver picks up other people and they stop at other resorts. So we go to other resorts. First of all, our resort was dope because it was manicured. Like, it's like a long ass road from the main road to get up to the resort. Right. But you didn't see anything. I couldn't tell you where employees came in, where they parked. It's just road, resort. Mm. The other resorts you would see like potholes in the road before you got there. And you had to stop at the guard gate every time. Mm-hmm. And every guard gate was like, like dudes had like AR-15s and shit, no shit at the gate. And I was talking to one of my coworkers who's, who's Mexican. And she was like, oh, yeah, back in the day, there's been incidences where like people just ran up in the resort and robbed everybody. I, that makes sense, shit. So you think about it, if it's poverty somewhere outside of that, I go in this resort and I, I can get some bread. I'm going to get some bread. Yo, like, it was cool, though. Everybody was like, I didn't run across anybody with even a, a mediocre hint of an attitude. Right. Like, it was dope all week. I got a pedicure while I was there because I forgot before I left. And, you know, I'm out with, yeah. the, with, the, with the slides on. Mm-hmm. And the dogs was hurting. So we they have a spa at the resort. And we got a, a manicure. I mean, a pedicure, excuse me. Bitch massaged my feet with hot rocks. No oh, shit. Nobody ever massaged my feet. That shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I shit. Did that fucking chair. I, I believe it. Like I was literally playing one of my puzzle games on the phone, listening to music, and I, you know, how you feel yourself getting sleepy. I was like, all right, I'm relaxed. That's cool. 
No, I literally like must have just my phone just slipped out of my hand. I was knocked. Oh shit. Yeah, that hot shit, rocks that shit, just like that like, shit had to feel good. I was like, yo, you wanna come back? You wanna come to America? You wanna come? Yo, <laughs> I'll no, take care of you. No pedicures. The food was all amazing. I, I made sure I ate something that I've never fucking ate before at least once a day. Right. And I actually lost weight on vacation and we ate like four times a day. Mm. Cause it was all inclusive, so you know we had to get our money's worth. Fuck yeah, <laughs> hell yeah! Like we ate dinner the one night and was like a snack, sort of room service. <laughs> right, that's dope. Yeah, yeah. facts. Um, I did the same shit. Yeah, we had a good time though. Um, and when we went on the one excursion on the way there to like the shopping center, like you could see, like it was sad, like kind of seeing some of the poverty. But then I started thinking, they gonna drop us off here? Mm. And my imagination would kick in. Like every time we were in a taxi somewhere off the resort, I'm like. Yo, what if this dude about to kidnap us? Then I remember I ain't rich or nothing, it? so nobody trying to kidnap me. They gonna this is a waste of resources. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> but the dudes was out. The, the 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 Mexican dudes was out there flirting with Susan and shit. Oh shit! Yeah, I thought Susan's <laughs> gonna bring her a poppy home. <laughs> like, I was like this your first time out here? I was like, okay, Susan, get his number, girl. <laughs> Oh, uh, you gonna come in and try to fix your sink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I gotta say, like, I told you some stories off mic. Like, what a, just from what you see, what a hardworking, fucking hustling, proud culture. Like, mm-hmm. um, I can't wait to go back. Right. Like, I, I don't wanna be that person and go back to the exact same place. But damn, it was a good enough experience that I would go back to the exact same damn place. Mm-hmm. But you know it's gonna suck if you go back and you go somewhere else and it's not as good as the other place. You mean like, I should have fucking went to the other place. Yeah. <laughs> you mean like this place ain't shit. <laughs> but I met a dope lady at work who's a travel agent, and one of the, the 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 things that's cool about what she does is she visits any place that she books for people. Right. So she's visited. So now I can say, hey, I want something the level of the. I want to go here, but I want my experience to be the level of this resort we went to before. Right. Because that shit was dope. Yeah, that shit sound dope. That's dope that she does that because it's somebody who actually has a first-hand experience. Yeah, on they're not going just sending you someplace. Exactly. So, um, that was pretty cool. So, I can't wait to go back, bro. Like, I feel you. And we got to do a couple's trip. I'm with it. We got Yeah, we got, we going to do a lot of couple shit. Oh, it's funny. Speaking of uh, sushi, Susan's birthday was the Black Friday, actually. Was it Black Friday? Yeah, Black Friday. Or Saturday. Bullshit. It was Saturday. So she had been wanting sushi and hibachi, so I, I took her out. And I was going to call you, but I'm like, ah, it's her birthday, so we'll do it a different time. And, um, you know, she has to maintain the gluten-free diet, right? Mm. <laughs> so speaking of the difference of fucking service, home versus out overseas. So we had explained it to the waiter. You Have you been? You've been to hibachi before, right? Not in a minute. But you know how like everybody sits at the table regardless of who you came with, yeah. unless you come with a full crowd. Yeah. So I explained to it, and he's like, well, she was like, and it's funny, be so proud of Susan. He was like, well, we can't do teriyaki because the, the seasoning has gluten in it. She's like, well, y'all just y'all, y'all can season it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, it was like, yeah. <laughs> so when the cook comes out, I don't know if he was running late or whatever. He when he was explaining it to him, he kind of got a fucking attitude about it, and I felt bad because he, you know, how they normally give a great performance and they're talking to you. Dude was just annoyed that he had to cook this chicken separate to the side. No oh, shit. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is, bro. It's part of serving the fucking customer. Yeah, he was he was not having it. So we it just is. looked at one of the other tables where they were having a good old time. So it must be nice to be at that table. Yeah, fuck <laughs> okay. it. Yeah. Good thing we're so close. But yeah, we gotta do that soon. Yeah, facts. We um, definitely got to plan that shit. Oh, I forgot I wanted to say at the beginning. Shout out to our guy, Zach. The opioid documentary is out. Facts. If y'all ain't check it out, go check it out. Yo, Zach. I don't even know if I told Zach this personally yet, and I think I got to call him and tell him. Yeah. But that shit was fucking dope. Yeah, that shit was dope. He like, did his job. It seemed like a real-ass documentary. Right. Um, it felt like a real ass documentary. It held my attention the entire time, and it was a short documentary, but it was great points. It was great to hear something specific from our area and hear people mm-hmm. representing our area talk. And the narrator was pretty fucking cool. Mm. Yeah, guys, I, I narrated it. It was kind of cool to hear my voice. I think I nailed the the 
documentary guy voice. Right. What'd you think? <laughs> yeah, it was decent. <laughs> That's dope as shit, though. But it is good to see people basically from our area trying to make a difference because that's a big difference. Like Zach's actually shining light on what we see and what yeah. goes on. So like that's that's dope. That's dope as shit. Yeah, Zach, are your flowers again? I'm gonna put the link in the description here. But big it was facts. Dope. Make sure y'all check it out. Big run facts. that shit up. Run it up. Run it up. Ah, oh, so I got a question for you. I wanted to see how you felt about this. I've been dying to talk about you, other than stressing the past couple of days. So I apologize, guys. The dumbest fucking error ever. <laughs> so came back from vacation. We had pre-recorded the episode because we knew I was away. Shout out to my guy, Darren, because he did everything the previous <laughs> week by himself. He had to launch it, promote it. Facts. I was stressing. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Even that one day, that makes a big fucking difference compared to all the shit. Yeah. Because that's even, that's even a job in itself, even though... Posting consistently is one like do, making sure you do it that day around the right time. Yeah, like, make sure you do all the fucking stories, all the so it's a lot of shit. Tagging everything. Tagging. Oh, forgot to put music on that one. Yeah, delete and redo it, and that yeah, that shit was annoying. So I appreciate that. <laughs> so um, and I even checked it out while I was even I seen it. I was like, ah, my god. <laughs> so um, I go to edit the video, guys. I had edited the audio a little bit, and I, I kind of waited until like, truthfully, I procrastinated until like Wednesday. I was like, all right, I'm nailing this down. And I closed that work, got home, ate dinner, was working on it. A little less production value than normal. But I was like, you know, our people, our listeners need this shit on time. It was up till three in the morning. Shit kept failing. Finally said it, you know, went to sleep, took a, a quick nap, got back up at like 7.30, worked on it again. Still wouldn't work. Frustrated Googling, rebooting, deleting software, re-adding the software. Figuring like, well, maybe I'll just use a different software. Right. Fuck, then I got to learn that shit. It's going to take me longer. Why is it so different? Long story less long, I changed one little transition on the intro. And that was what was hanging the software up. Uh, And that came after an hour call to Apple. Because I finally gave in Googling it myself. I was like, I pay for this fucking Apple Pay. Let me call them. It's their fucking software. Yeah, see what it's hidden for. Granted, I did get some cool tips to manage the shit in the future from him, but. And then I changed that one little half a second transition. <laughs> Fucked everything up. And they rendered the whole <laughs> video with no problem. So, sorry there were no timestamps. Sorry there were no close-ups. I apologize. Hey, it is what it is. We still giving y'all content, though. So Yeah. Um, that's what matters. And we appreciate everybody that, that, that's been listening. Like, it's cool to see um, the listenership go up. It's cool to see the viewership go up. Mm-hmm. We appreciate the hell out of you guys. Yeah, it was cool to see them, uh, them interactions with the social media and all that shit go up. We definitely appreciate all of it. The comments, the likes, the shares, everything. We definitely appreciate all of it. Yeah, shout out to my coworker, Beth. Beth always reposted. Oh, yeah, yeah. Beth was texting me like, um, I wanted to watch this before work. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> But shout out to you, Beth. I've known Beth a short time, and Beth has been like just a huge supporter. Right. So we gotta have Beth on the show one time. She'll, she'll crack you up. Facts. She's with your it. new old position. My new old position. Okay. Yeah. Got you. For half a second, you confused the fuck out of me. Yeah. But I get what you're saying. Um. What was I? Go- oh, so I got. I saw this post, and I was like, I gotta share this with my guy. So much so that I did not want to share it with you beforehand. Yeah. You want. And you know me. It's been like I've been holding on to that shit. All right, so it says, this is the post. Leaving a man for cheating is like putting your kids up for adoption for misbehaving. React. Hmm. Uh, (laughs) I'm iffy on that. Okay. I have mixed feelings, like, and, and, and on one hand, I feel like, not it's not the same thing because your kids are your responsibility and your job to bring them up in life and make sure that they're taken care of whereas in reality your man is not supposed to be the one that you do that for like granted y'all are supposed to take care of each other and focus on each other's interests and all of that but he's not your sole responsibility basically Okay. That's the way I'm looking at it. But on the other hand, like that kind of is true because 
I, like I said before, niggas is going to fuck up at some point. Like, mother not be cheating, mother be flirting, whether it be just conversating with somebody. Like, a nigga's going to fuck up at some point. Right. How y'all learn from that and what happens after that is what matters. So if he fucks up and you just throw him to the curb, all right, that relationship, honestly, in my opinion, was never supposed to happen. If he fucks up and y'all talk about it and understand why motherfuckers are hurt and why people feel certain ways and what are the steps that need to not be taken so that doesn't happen again, that's a difference. Right. Like, I feel like, I feel honestly, I feel like that question doesn't even matter. What matters is, do you have faith in your relationship and are you committed to that relationship? That's what matters. Like, if you're not committed to the relationship and not, if y'all don't want the same thing as the end result and don't want to focus on each other, it's not going to work. Like, like, all just aside, like, even like back in the day, I, I've told my wife, like, yeah, I look at other females, but I ain't touching nobody. I'm not approaching right. nobody. I'm not, no, it just is what it is. Like, I'm a man, like, that happens. Right. Like, yeah, as long as I don't follow in with that shit or try to do something about it, then I'm good. Right. And that's the issue. Everybody doesn't think like that. Like, a lot of people think it as, like, this. I can't even fucking explain it. I've had people say, if you could look at somebody and think thoughts about them sexually, then you're not into the person you're with. And it used to make me feel guilty mm -hmm. for the longest. It would make me guess, like, was I into the person I was with? And I think that's absurd and unrealistic. No, yeah, that's not. Because just liking something physically doesn't mean you're not into the person you're with. Because when you're with somebody, it's supposed to be more than physical. Like, it's supposed to be physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. spiritual. <clears throat> it's supposed to be all of that. Like, if you're only thinking about, okay, because I like this person's physical appearance means I'm not interested in my significant other. Like, that's bullshit. Like, right. there's no... Even your significant other is kind of physically attracted to somebody else. Like, it's it's going to happen. But what matters is if y'all are focused on each other. Like, Right. And I think the separation comes into play when you decide to act on it, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'm ever going to not, like, wow, she got a great figure or, you know. She, she looks... got fat ass. Yeah. That's... <laughs> he was trying to be nice. I was trying to be nice. <laughs> he was trying to be nice. And so... But it's if you decide to act on it. Exactly. I think is a difference. But I thought it was an interesting concept because you hear some people say, men and women, right? Um, if this person cheats on me, I'm automatically out. But were you ever committed anyway? And not that I'm condoning. No, yeah. We, by I, no means. You know I'm not condoning that we shit. We know. <laughs> That's why I had to speak. That's why I had to put my disclaimer there. <laughs> but mistakes happen. Yeah. It's now, I think the difference is if you're committing the same mistake over and over and over again, right? Yep. That's what matters, yo. Like, if if the person consistently does the same thing and does the same, then they have no intention on changing and they have no intention on intention intentions on trying to make sure that the relationship stays afloat. Like, if you don't see the hurt that you cause somebody or see the fact that they're getting to the point where they're getting fed up with your shit and get ready to leave your ass and you still continue to do the same thing, that person was never truly into you. Not never truly into you, but that person was never planning on consistently building onto the relationship. Because if you don't take into consideration what somebody else is going through or what somebody else feels from what happened, you don't, in my opinion, you don't really care about the situation. It's, take, it's, it's always taking consideration of other people. Like, Step in somebody else's shoes. It's all like that's always what they say. Step in somebody else's shoes and see how they would feel about it. Right. What do you think about though? I used to look back when I was growing up, the group of friends that I held when I was like right out of high school, right? And when you looked at, I think it was five, six of us in our like core group. When you looked at the five, six of us, only two guys in the group, you know, had both their mother and father. In a you know in the same home mm -hmm. married together, and the rest of us didn't. Mm -hmm. And so, for the most part, you've either never experienced that 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 fam that type of family unit, or you've experienced you know where you had that type of family unit and then something happened and they're apart. 
So maybe you don't know a good example of what a loving relationship looks like. Mm-hmm. And as a lot of, especially that young time, a lot of those formidable years, mm. you're you're absorbing your environment, right? Yeah, it's it's and so you don't learning. know what it looks like. So like you know, I've even spoken to me where I thought it would be like you know, Cliff and Claire Huxtable, like shit just worked because opposite of that, I had never seen it work, mm-hmm. right? Like there, there was no, I don't want to misspeak, but yeah, I don't think there were any in our immediate and like you know maybe first circle of family. There were no husband wife couples so you only mm-hmm. saw mothers you know what i mean yeah that's facts and so you you don't really know what it looked like you know nobody's stupid you know certain things are right and wrong mm-hmm. but you don't get to see conflict like my mother used to never let me and my sister argue right and i get the point mm-hmm. like your family you should always have each other's back but i think it really eroded our ability to resolve conflict Mm -hmm. whereas my sister just steps out as soon as she just won't fucking talk to you and it may be years or time passed down the line write you a letter Mm -hmm. well that's one-sided right you got to say what you got to say and i didn't really get to react in in the time period and me i would just be like you know i'm not fucking with you say but that's the problem though nobody wants to sacrifice their form of communication because everybody wants to be heard when they want to be heard, and they just want it, that to be the end of it. But no, you have to find a way for both of y'all to communicate. Like, that that note shit is a little odd to me. But if that's her way of communicating, you have to take it in and then let her know, like, yo, this is how I feel about this certain situation. But she needs to also be able to, when you need to talk to her, fucking talk. Right. Because like, if y'all not... If y'all not are trying to understand each other's forms of communication and work with each other's forms of communication, y'all not gonna communicate, and then y'all just gonna be like, "Fuck it," like, yeah, and that's what it gets to, right? Like, and so I think it de- depending, going back to the original thing, like depending on when you're in this relationship, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, then you add another set of variables. How is that person raised, right? And maybe that person's not patient enough to work through whatever, whatever, ah, work through whatever's going on with you. You know, because they feel it's worth it. So it, it it presents this challenge, right? Because yeah, that shit definitely does. What's your love language? Do you know my love language. Do you know the five love languages? Nah. So I'm a paraphrase them, but they are um, acknowledgement, like you like to be, you like the things you do acknowledged. Mm-hmm. Um, gifts, like you like to receive gifts. Acts of service, which I always confuse the difference between acts of service. Like, people do things for you, I guess. Yeah, people do things for you. It is is getting naked active service? <laughs> oh, <fuck it. laughs> I guess in a sense you wouldn't say that. Um, and then there's touch, I think. Like, some people like to be touched to communicate. How many was Verbal, that? Verbal, right? That Acts was... of service, acknowledgement. Gifts. Gifts, touch. touch and I'm verbal. forgetting one. Is it verbal? Ain't it? No, right? I was looking. No, I thought I had language. the book over there, but I can't remember. Which one do you think you are? I can't th- think I of it. Like, I feel like I'm almost... I feel like I'm a bit of everything. I like acknowledgement more than anything now. Okay. I do like to be acknowledged because I bust my fucking ass. And so, like, when I'm doing something and I know it's good, like, just tell me, you did okay. Yeah. I just need an okay. I don't need to say it's awesome. Like, just say, oh, you did all right. Okay. I feel fucking amazing. Like... That's that's always been my big thing. I think that's why throughout my life I always try to acknowledge people and always try to say thank you, like, yo, I appreciate you for doing that, like all that shit, because I feel like it's something that needs to be heard. Not everybody gets gets acknowledged for the things that they do for you people. Know, you know what? Every day when you would leave work, you would go over to the communication system and say, Hey guys, I'm leaving, but thank you. I appreciate you. You're right. Mm-hmm. That, Mine is acknowledgement too. Mm-hmm. I like gifts too, but I think I if I could only choose one. Acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. Yeah. That's I wonder your... if that's a man thing. It might be. We we need our ego stroked. Yeah. Like, I mean, it sounds bad saying it like that, but men are egotistical. So yep. if if we're tra- aiming to do something good and then you just tell us that we did that good, that's going to make us feel so much better and want to do more. Like, 
when I'm told that I did good, like, nigga, I'm like, all right, what else can I do? I'm trying, like... That's yeah, <laughs> plus, if, you know, you don't do it for that reason, but it's nice just to hear somebody just to say, feel it and hear hey, it. thank you for doing this thing. Mm-hmm. It's super appreciative. And t- my mother ruined touch for me. I know she didn't, again, you know, it's funny, as you get older and you start, and you're a parent too, you start kind of thinking about the parenting you had, right? And everybody has things that they love that their parents did. Everybody, have, everybody has things that they not so much didn't like what their parents did or didn't understand it. And I think as you start getting older, you kind of develop it. You understand it, right? But at the the core of it, because there's some things that as an adult I get kind of angry about. Mm-hmm. But then I remember that she did her best, mm-hmm. right? And she tried. And I don't I don't think anything that I have a grievance with she did with any malice, mm-hmm. intent of malice, right? So I remember that and that's how I kind of because again, I can't go to my mother and ask her, "Hey, why did we do this? Or why did you say this? Or why did you feel that way?" Right? Mm-hmm. But when me and my son's mother first started dating, mm-hmm. we we loved each other. Mm-hmm. Yep, and we would hold hands and we would kiss in public. She's like, "Why do you got to show public signs of affection? That's so insecure." Uh... And everybody knows that you're together, and it stuck with me. God damn, stuck with me my entire life. Nah, yeah. even to this point, I even to this point, I recognize it. And even when I do it, it's genuine, but I feel guilty. Like, I'm disappointed my mother in the back of my head. Yo, shit. God damn. Right, that's yeah. a scar like a motherfucker. Right. Like, but I don't to the care point where public affection. I don't even know if I if I slap I that ass in public. <laughs> Fuck you talking about. I don't care. <laughs> but but you see what I'm saying? Like, the little things that... Yeah. It's funny. In the back of my head, I was talking to my boy Art. He was like, Sometimes y'all be all over the place, and I'm thinking where we went to and how we got here, but it's all relevant. It happens. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't remember my point. Oh, I think you have to learn that level of communication. So getting back to the original question, I thought it was a great point. I think one of the problems is people give up too easily. If it's some, If it's something that you want, it's not worth giving up. Like, cause in all jokes aside, like, I've, like, as we already know, I spoke about my past. I did some shit at the very, very beginning of our relationship. If I didn't work towards making her feel better and making her understand that I wasn't going anywhere and that shit wasn't going to happen again, we wouldn't be where we are today. Right. I love where we are today. So, like, I, that's why I'm always grateful for looking back at the fact that, one, she gave me another chance to actually... Show her that, like, yo, I'm not doing that shit. I'm with you, like, I like all that shit. And so, I'm always grateful to that shit. But if you don't, if you don't want to put in, put the work in, like, it's not going to work. And a relationship the- is work. That shit is a full time job. Like, you are the support system. You are the best friend, the lover. The you got to make sure that you hit all them roles perfectly, or as perfectly as you can. Well, yeah, right? as perfectly as ain't nobody gonna do it all yeah. perfectly. No, but I, and that's what I think the difference is, right? You got an opportunity to make up for it, and then you did. You you didn't fuck up again, right? Facts, big facts. So that's why I say, to a degree, I agree a lot with that statement. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I I couldn't wait, and me and Susan talked about it a little bit. Like while we were on vacation, we had all these dope ass fucking just conversations, mm-hmm. and um, she was even saying like. People will say that, and I would say, like, yeah, if you cheat, I'm absolutely done, but I don't know what I'm done. We have so much in fuck invested. Like, mm-hmm. when you got invested, it's hard to just pull away from that shit. If it's easy for somebody to just pull away from it, they planned on doing some shit from the jump. So, you know, I got to ask me, yeah, I, I got to ask you a what if question. What? So, unlikely, but should your wife step out of, outside of your relationship, uh-huh. right? And you discover it, uh-huh. do you stay with her? I mean, yeah, but I'm going to be behind bars. <laughs> <laughs> we, as long we, as she put some on your commissary. Yeah, that's it. As long as you put some on my commissary, we still together, but I'm going to be behind bars because I'm catching a body. Mm-mm. Outside of catching a body, would you, um, let's say you got away with it. Yeah. Would you then work essentially the same way she did for you? Yeah, I okay. would. Because she deserves that much. Because, and that's the thing, if you invest in, into somebody, they're willing to invest back into you. Well, they should be. 
because some people just take investments and just dick around with it, and that shit's not yeah. cool. But like, even in my situation, um, I even I'm not gonna dive in, relive that right now, but I was even willing to work it out until I discovered the thing that she was upset about was secondary. And so I'm like, mm, it's a, it's like I'm a consolation prize. Mm. And so if I'm a consolation prize, that doesn't tell me that you want to work to resolve this as much as I do. You have a fallback? Yeah, like uh. in the situation it didn't work out with plan A. Uh. Maybe I made a mistake. Uh-huh. Do you think we made a mistake? I said, no, you made a mistake. I'm just reacting to your mistake. Yeah. Because up until that point, you know, I'm 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 not perfect. <laughs> yeah. I'm severely infallible at times or have been. <laughs> and so I was willing to forgive her transgressions and, and move forward with it, but it was she was upset that that situation didn't work out the way she wanted to. So then it felt like I was the fallback. Yeah. Nah, yeah. And so in that instance, I was ready to give her up for adoption. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nah, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd definitely. Yeah, she'd have been gone. Mm-mm. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're not going to make me secondary. I'd never be a fallback for nobody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like if you're into it and you, and you made a mistake and you want to work it out, let's do it. Let's yeah. put the work in. Let's do it. But if you're so hurt that that didn't work and you just. Sitting by me fucking complaining about why it didn't work with that motherfucker. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> like, <laughs> Interesting time in my life. Dark times we refer to it as. Is it dark times? <laughs> but Fuck again, I'm, I'm, it's funny because in the moment, you don't want to deal with this shit. But I'm grateful for that because I think it put me on my current course. Mm-hmm. In the back of my mind, I'm hearing you saying that was your course anyway. But mm-hmm. I think certain situations arm you to be more, more prepared for that course that's laid out for mm-hmm. you, right? It's just thing. It, it put me in a focused mindset. It put me in a another thing. My mother had told me once when I was younger, she said, I'm selfish. And I was like, me? Selfish? Like, I like to give other people. And it's also driven me to the point that I think in times I've overgiven to other people, because I, I like I like giving to people. I honestly like helping people and giving, you know, whether it be time, whatever I can do to help. I'm selfish. I've gave too much. What I learned through that relationship was I was selfish with myself more than any mm-hmm. fucking body else. Mm-hmm. And, you know, little things I put on, you know, how many years did I want to go back to school for it? I want to back, go back to school for it. And it was always something else. You know, some of them I take credit was an excuse that I made yeah. because of fear, right? Mm-hmm. But a lot of the times it just... Time or money didn't a lot for it because I had to do other things. And I finally said, like we always say, like you have to love yourself in order to love somebody, right? I don't even think I love myself completely. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it hit me till I went through all of that. And so it really changed at a core level, like how I made decisions about certain things. Mm-hmm. Like, um, it's funny, I remember telling Susan, like, hey, I'm gonna go back to school. She kind of looked at me weird. She didn't really respond to it. So I waited. I said, hey, I talked to this person today. I'm going to go back to school. She's like, oh, okay. So it was bothering me because, right, like, I'm ecstatic, right? Mm. Hey, I'm about to spend $50,000. I don't know how, but I'm about to spend $50,000 <laughs> to get a plaque on the wall. I'm excited, right? And so I, again, the communication, because this is different. This is Ramon at whatever age. Different than Ramon at 20, right? Ramon at, fuck you, I'm doing it, and whatever. Say, hey, you didn't seem really excited about that, and I'm really excited about that. And it's going to be tough on me because I'm working full-time, and I'm going to be going to school full-time. I'm going to need some support, right? I'd like your support. But if you don't think you can do that, that's fine. I understand that. But I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't think you can support it, this won't work. Mm. And it was, and, you know, on the outside, it might sound like a very dickish Thing conversation. Say, but nah, that's real shit, though. And it wasn't as matter of fact as I'm saying it now, right? Yeah. But that's, that's what the premise of the conversation It was, was. this is how I feel, and this is what I'm going to do because I need to do this for me. I, I would like you there, but could you be there? 
And it's explained, I wasn't sure you were serious, and I'm super excited. And let yeah. me tell you, time and time again, she has proven more supportive than three or four of them other people have ever dated right. than one human being. And and she did everything. Like, you know, she, of course, she sacrifices time, just date night time, right? Because I get up early. I was driving an hour to work. Go to work an hour. Go to work. Work for nine hours. Drive an hour back home. She'd have dinner ready because I had a class. She'd have it sitting on the desk mm. so that I could eat while I was in the fucking lecture. You know, you know, I'm gonna do this or I'm gonna go do this thing so you can do this or it like the whole time. Like, right. Super supportive. Right. That's right. But I think the difference with the conversation is what happens if I never had that conversation? Yeah. You you probably would have it had never got to what it was supposed to be. That's where communication falls in. If you never communicated, you y'all would have never gotten to an understanding of this is what it's supposed to be. Or Not, even I was gonna say, even worse, I could have just assumed that. She didn't she give didn't a give shit, a yeah. <laughs> and it yeah. was the furthest from the case. And it started being a dick about the situation. <laughs> that used to be my. That's my one of my biggest issues. I'm. A, I assume a lot. I assume a lot, and you know what they say about assuming? They make an ass out of you and me. One of the things that I read, and I won't say where, but it talks about how your brain is designed right to save you from danger. Mm it paints a picture of things that are similar in your past. And that's great. That's a great developmental skill to have, right? Because if you know, if you walk outside and there's a sheet of ice on the ground that you might slide underneath a car, Mm -hmm. your brain remembers that. But it says what you also have to do is also scan for new information and how this situation is different. You almost have to look at it from a third party. Mm -hmm. Because you're right, we'll react on the same situation because it looks like the situation that happened over and over and over again. Big facts. Big facts. We respond to that shit the same way. In reality, it's an entirely different situation. Yeah, man. Communication is important. All the way. No matter what the relationship or level is, if y'all shit's going to work, you need communication. Facts. You need to figure out how to express your feelings, how to express what you care about, what you don't care about. Let it be known. And y'all come to an understanding. If y'all can't at least disagree on some something, Come to an understanding and don't talk about that shit anymore. What the fuck is the point? Like, like, <laughs> right. like, like <clears throat> there's multiple things me and my wife do not agree on. We barely talk about them, but it is what it is. Right. I am my, I am me, and she is her. Like, and we love each other regardless. That shit ain't gonna change nothing. It's because you don't got you got problem with somebody's thought process on something. Speaking about problem, I'm gonna tread respectfully. I have a I have a little beef with your wife. Why? She had posted something. I forget the post, but when I read it, she was like, y'all don't know, but if you had what my husband had, and you know my imagination is like, ah, <laughs> ah, ah, get it out of my head. Oh, shit. Yeah, I seen that one. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> y'all gonna have to go look for that comment. That's not, no. That's not, uh, <laughs> no. Hey. When you're blessed, you're blessed. Hey, if you got a baby arm holding the apple, you got a baby <laughs> arm holding the apple. You know? Good for you. Facts. It is what Good it is, her. man. Good for her. Yeah. I was like, okay. They drinking over at the Mitchell house tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was some things going on that night. All right. What's your final thought there, buddy? <laughs> Hey, I want to talk about that. Uh, what you I clapped them cheeks, my. It's like nah, <laughs> ain't no psych nah. But final thought, just communicate. Like do whatever you can to try and make sure the communication is there and fair. Don't over talk somebody. Don't under talk. Make sure you get your point across. Express how you feel because nobody will know how to run a situation if they don't know how you feel about the situation. So always communicate with everybody. I don't. I'm still trying. But do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I'm going to underscore your communication thing because I think when I think about all relationships, not just romantic ones in life, that had something awry, in most cases, just having a conversation would have fixed it. Mm. I think particularly like with your bros, right? You have um, You have an assumption. You have a miscommunication, and then you just say, "Well, I know this person knows," so mm-hmm. I'm, and then you just never talk about it, and it never gets resolved, yep. right? 
And so, you know, communicate, like talk to people. That's why I ask questions, bro. I don't assume shit anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I know my brain automatically assumes and thinks something. And then I say, well, I'm going to ask. And if I'm right, then fine. My initial reaction was what it is. And that's how I'm going to act accordingly. But maybe I'm wrong and there's a misunderstanding there. Mm -hmm. So, Miscommunication is like the biggest thing that destroys relationships. Or makes great sitcoms in the 80s and 90s. That too. (laughs) 80s and 90s. I didn't see them that much, but hey. One of my favorite sitcoms, quick segue related, is Three's Company. And the whole basis of everything funny, yeah, it came out in the 70s. That's the dude that lives with the two chicks? Yeah. Okay. The whole basis of everything that was funny in that show was because of a miscommunication. Mm. The simplest miscommunication caused the biggest drama, and it was the funniest shit to watch. Oh, shit. Yeah, my favorite sitcom of all times. Right. Yeah, it was decent. You know, I fuck with Martin and all of them. I, I and similar. Yeah. I ain't, I don't know Three's Company like that. I seen it. You know, the little fuzzy screens and shit. That shit. <laughs> that shit. Resolution back in the day was horrible, but that's another subject. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought about that shit. And you think about it. The biggest TV in a house was smaller than, than that, that top monitor. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you had the 27 inch floor model, you was the shit. 27 inch was the big screen. And then when, TV. They, when they created like the big screen, yo, we had an old ass, big ass. It was just, that was like furniture. <laughs> yeah. That shit was annoying. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it for this Yeah, one. that's <laughs> it. <laughs> we was about to start another topic and I keep hearing art in my head like, you, you, you go all over yeah, the place. <laughs> You got them right, we do. <laughs> Look, man, our minds fucking run. We got to get some of that shit out when it pops up. Yeah. But I appreciate you guys uh, listening and watching. I think this is a good topic. We we kind of delved, but it kind of made sense of why you would why you would act like I agree with what the post said. Like, That's facts. Why That's you should facts. be that way. Um, So go ahead, make sure you listen and watch. And watch and listen. And just FYI, if the podcast video is ever late, I guarantee the audio is on time. So you could definitely Facts. listen to it. It's always it. on there Thursday. Make sure y'all check that out. Make sure you follow us on everything at Warm the Crib across Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. On TikTok, we are Warm the Crib Podcast. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube. Go to the YouTube, click that little goddamn uh, subscribe button, and then click the notification the bell. bell. The notification bell. Make sure you got that. So anytime we drop something, you're the first one to know. We appreciate that and love y'all. Yeah, let's make a push, guys. I, I always think it's weird asking for shit, but I, every video I watch, somebody asks for it. We are so close to breaking the 100 subscriber mark. Yeah, last I checked, we was at 75, bro. We getting there. Like, let's, this, let's get us over to 75. We're trying to break 100. Tell, you, tell your peoples. Tell your peoples, peoples. All we need is five of y'all to tell five people. Yeah. That'd be 25, but whatever. That's enough to get to us to 100. We had 75. You are correct. I don't know why I was thinking 15. And I suck at math. So. (laughs) 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 Until next week, we'll see you guys again. Peace. Peace.